Hello, this is Ali. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my most recently morphing froglet here. This right here, you can see the little legs. I've been raising it in a cup with an acarus plant to help with the ammonia from its waste for a little bit. You can see it down here hiding. That's also why I put the plants. Anyway, it's grown most of its legs. You can see the two front legs right there, so it's about ready to morph out. So I'm going to transfer this guy to his new habitat. Now this guy, this little froglet, is the fourth of the uh, set of four offspring of this pair of dart frogs here. My breeding pair. This is their 18 inch cube Zoomed terrarium. So this is actually the mom right here. Say hi mom. There she is. Now she doesn't have a name but uh, the father is Megamind. He's not visible right now, but we'll check on him later. Anyway, these little pools of water here are what they've laid their, or what they've uh, set their tadpoles in after they've hatched, which the father actually piggyback on, piggybacks onto, on his back to these pools of water. So, I'm gonna be showing you the offspring here. So this is actually the oldest, first one that came out of the water. Here he is. This one's about one and a half months old. And for each of these little bins, I have kind of a piece of cork here for invertebrates and microfauna to hide in so they can forage. And then also a pool of water here with java moss and charcoal bits to help with ammonia from their waste and just to keep the water a little cleaner. All right, so that was froglet one. The second froglet here, hiding under the piece of log or cork bark I added, you can see these little head over there. And I use uh, Sterilite containers from the Home Depot, they're super cheap, like 99 cents each, so they're very economical and very sturdy for this job. Froglet number three here is very small, right here in this little cup. And all those fruit flies are escaping, so I better close it. And now the fourth container is for this little guy over here, which I'm going to put in right now. He's not ready to hop out of the water quite yet. And what I have here is a mix of uh, sphagnum moss and some exoterra terrarium moss. So this is the label here. I have them all labeled just to keep track of which is which. So I've been soaking this for quite a bit. So now it's ready to mix around. I like to use both kinds just for variety, for aesthetics, but also to vary up the texture so the frog has a little interesting environment to explore. Also to provide variety for a little microfauna I put in here, I put springtails and isopods. That way they uh, help a little bit with cleanup of the frog's waste and also to provide foraging opportunities for this frog as a supplement. Alright, so the moss is nice and fluffy here. Not too, not dry but not soaking wet so to, pr to cause things like foot infections or anything. All right, so here's the little guy and there at the bottom. And all I do here is tilt the cup so the water's not pouring out. I'm gonna push the moss a little this way so there's room at the bottom. All right, so you can see the cup is leaning outward. So the froglet can easily climb out when it's ready, like in a few days or about a week, or a little more maybe. Uh, the tail's gonna shorten a bit and it's gonna try climbing out of the water. And then this here will provide its an opportunity to climb in and out if it needs to go back for humidity or for a drink and just as it's ready like when the tail's like about gone I can remove this and then replace it with a smaller um, a smaller like sauce or a little cup you can get at like a deli mart like these over here let me open the container really quick sorry my hands dirty let me use my clean hand like this cup over here with the little guy in it So now that this setup here is complete for now, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I apologize again, my right hand's dirty. I don't want to get that on my phone. All right, closing that up. All right, so now here I have all four of their offspring. 
These are actually the first offspring they've had, so our successful offspring, as in the past, they've laid a couple eggs which were unsuccessful. Oh, and you can see Megamind in there right now. So that's actually the first dart frog I've gotten from a reptile expo in Pomona. I live in Southern California, so the Pomona Super Show, which some of you are probably familiar with, I went there in uh, December of 2016 and got him when he was about six months old. He's currently, I have it on my phone again as far as age tracking goes, he's about two years old as of now. So I'm going to open the tank a little so you can see Mama poke peeking out here. Hi Mom. And there's Dad. Let's hope he comes out to the front a bit. Yeah, so this pair over here is the uh, breeding pair and the parents of the offspring I just showed you. She looks a little curious and interested. And this species here is the Dendrobates tinctorius azurus, azurius also pronounced. These guys are native to the Sapalwini savannas and little patches of rainforest in northern South America in countries such as the edge of Guyana, Suriname, northern Brazil above the Amazon rainforest, or above the Amazon river. And these are just one locale or one subspecies. Oh, you can't climb out. No, 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 no. Get back in there. One subspecies of about 20 or so of the tinctorious species of frogs. They're all the same species, just different local color morphs based off of geographical isolation for quite a while where they developed distinct coloration and it's been, as far as what I've read, 10,000-ish years since the species split off into subspecies, so that's quite interesting. Here's Megamind coming up to the front. Say hi, Megamind. Very colorful. My favorite color, blue, which is why I have these guys. Now her, I've actually gotten from a uh, local dart frog keeper, like a hobbyist like me, who I've happened to find in the area. She's actually older than him. She, he, she's about four years, like over four years old, but they breed perfectly fine and their offspring are healthy. So I got her from a local breeder, hobbyist, who used to breed them in a larger scale. Uh, for a good deal, he drove her to me and uh, he delivered and this nice healthy frog over here and they eat quite well all right so let's close up this terrarium and this terrarium i've had for since i've got megamind well a little after because i've housed him in a 10 gallon this 10 gallon i have here separately for the oldest dart frog froglet which i'm going to keep i have a couple of clippings in here which grew you can see some peperoma here some begonia some tricolor wandering jew vine and then here's a mix of magnolia leaf litter, live oak leaf litter. And now, and here's my 20 gallon aquarium. This is my Orinoco River Basin Aquarium with a freshwater angelfish, a bunch of black mystery snails, ghost shrimp, which you can't see right now really well. Let's see if we can find any. You can see one right over, yeah, right over there in the center of the camera. Offspring of my previous batch, actually. I have some coconut shells which I boiled and uh, let settle on the bottom for that natural look and to release black water tannins which make the water a tea color. Actually very beneficial for the fish, releases uh, acidic properties which are antibacterial, antifungal, um, brings the water to a nice low pH which they like. Here's one of the mystery snails climbing up the glass, some anacharis plant, Vallisnera plant, Amazon sword, Brazilian pennywort. This is Bubbles, the freshwater angelfish. She's about seven years old. I've had her since eighth grade. I'm now in my third year of college. And then this is my school of black neon tetras. Sorry for the camera and the glass reflection. Yeah, so you can see in here my school of black neon tetras. 10 actually. And I also use a large uh, piece or a branch of manzanita wood in here. We'll cover all this in a separate video. I'll show you how I built these aquariums, this terrarium, as well as discuss how I constructed this. And for this tank, you could see the flowers over here of the uh, Brazilian peace lily species I've picked here, and they're enjoying the pool. Sorry to interrupt. So here's where I culture their food. These are fruit fly cultures, super easy to produce, a lot easier than you'd think, and very cheap, which is a great reason to keep these dart frogs. So all I use for these are um, potato or mashed potato flakes, powdered sugar, and uh, 
brewer's yeast. I have it in a set mixed ratio, which I will discuss in a different video when I make a new batch. I uh, use some hot water, add a little bit of that, boiling water, and then I top it off with a uh, coffee filter. I previously used Excelsior straw like over here, but to cut down on costs and as far as uh, being eco-friendly as far as uh, transportation and you know paying for um, shipping and all that, I chose to do my own, like make it as eco-friendly as possible by reusing these plastic cups. Um, obviously the food is biodegradable, so is the uh, coffee filter. So all this is like as as uh, sustainable as possible and these yield quite a bit of flies because these guys consume a lot of flies as well as the young I feed the frog lips every day I feed the parents about every two to three or even four days because they're a lot larger and actually sustain some body fat to uh, keep themselves going and they have all the microfauna and little critters in the tank to forage for as far as the tadpoles diet I've raised them on uh, a couple separate types of foods. First one here is this brand of frog and tadpole food. I forgot the brand name. It's yeah, the brand. I don't see the brand name on here. Anyway, the second food item is Josh's Frogs Dart Frog Tadpole Food. Josh's Frogs is actually where I've got my first frog from. This stuff has a lot of great carotenoids, a lot of uh, spirulina and chlorella algae powder. And then this third set here is actually um, meant for fish fry, but it works equally well for tadpoles. This is Micron or Sarah Micron growth food. I just I actually take the little granules of this or this when I rotate between them, uh, cover it in powder, like powder it in this the way you would with like crickets or fruit flies for your other reptiles and amphibians, and then just drop it in the water for them as I feed them. When I first feed them, um, I uh, drop about a pellet every two days, and then when they get older, like uh, greater feeding volumes but less frequent feeding, so say like two pellets every two or three days, because they'll also forage on the plants I have in the water with them, and it also gives their digestive system a break to clear out. I also use RepTi-Safe water conditioner here to treat all their water and let it sit for a day before I um, renew or change their water in the cups I raise them in. And as a safety measure, I haven't used this. This is just an item of preparation, but a lot of, especially uh, professional dart frog breeders and keepers use this. Cordon Methylene Blue. It's a general disease prevention. It's, it's um, a much more concentrated form of antibacterial, antifungal, a general disease prevention. So I haven't used it. I actually need to do a little more research on this before I use it, which is funny. I mean, I have read about it, but um, I have it as a backup just in case I either run out of this or just when I have doubts or if there's anything noticeably wrong. But it's always good to have something like this on hand. You uh, dilute a small, small amount of this, like a couple drops in like a five or like one to five gallon amount of water to use. So it's pretty potent for... Uh, what it is, which is why I'm going to do a little more research and wait on this um, until or before I have new froglets after this set of frogs. Anyway, um, I will update you when this froglet over here morphs out onto land. Um, it was nice presenting my froglets over here. Sorry. It was nice presenting my froglets here. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.